which perhaps you know we as an arm as an army and especially me at the helm of affairs of heading a core which has got about uh, 400 odd helicopters and uh, a manpower of about 11000 which includes about 1000 odd pilots to give you the you know uh, a sense of it vis-a-vis -vis compared to in the whole in our whole country in the civil street we just have about 230 helicopters and we are managing operating about 400 helicopters but i must give you another side of the story if you go to johannesburg uh, rio de janeiro in brazil which is called the helicopter city in the world they operate 650 helicopters in that city in just one city they are operating 650 helicopters we are operating 233 to be precise civil helicopters in our country so that is the kind of magnitude of numbers which we should be aware of when we are dealing with you know uh, flying machines and yes we are on a trajectory of growth as a nation and i'm sure in the next uh, 10 odd years the numbers are going to increase if not many fold by at least four to five times that is what our estimate is so that is what brings me to you know the issue at hand there are two things in the aviation industry one is the manufacture of aircrafts and second is the maintenance repair and overall so while manufacture is important there is no doubt somebody has to make these machines for them to be available to the clients to fly them clients could be military air force navy or civil street but you need people to repair them maintain them and overall them at all times only then the aircrafts are going to be available to be flown and not sitting on ground because if the time on ground is more then the company whatever it is whether it is military also they're losing out on precious resources uh, you know of the aircraft being on the tarmac so that that uh, uh, needs to be understood in that perspective the second issue that we need to understand is you know how do we converge the civil as well as the military uh, mro facilities while uh, kanal kubey uh, counted about 130 not companies in india today they work on these MRO kind of thing out of which five to six are major players, balance are small players. Balance, you know, uh, for convergence to take place, firstly people need to understand that we in the military are very very keen and we are ready for anyone to come in and do the maintenance, repair, and overall for us. Which brings me to the main issue. I, uh, you know, personally feel that the manufacturer should get separated from the MRO. if that happens there is a huge flip to the mro till the time the manufacturer remains involved in the mro activities you will find there's always a conflict at the manufacturer level at the highest level the the conflict is what the conflict is should he produce or manufacture more machines or should he devote more time and resources and manpower to the maintenance repair and overall so that is where the conflict comes so to, to that end i feel unless the manufacturer gets separated from the mro facilities there will be a lot of challenges in so far as at least the military aviation is concerned but today we are very open we have established two uh, maintenance repair overall hubs one in the northern part of the country and one in the eastern part and we have given uh, an audience to large number of companies and anyone who is ready He is. Uh, we are more than willing to accommodate him. The original equipment manufacturers, original equipment uh, suppliers. Because what happens today is when we send an item back to the manufacturer, which in our case is by and large HAL, they in fact give it to somebody else to repair it, overhaul it, and then it comes back to us. In the process, what is happening is we are wasting on time, and we are also uh, actually it is costing us more. because finally the uh, if there is a middle player or middle man in uh, in between the cost is going to be more so we are looking at that the people who want to do it directly business with us they are more than welcome so that is one message i can give uh, with this audience and with especially the mros if you want to uh, do any kind of maintenance repair and overall uh, you are more than welcome and the last point i would make on this issue is what uh, even uh, somebody just made a mention See the uh, we have three regulators DGCA, SEMILAC, and DGAQA. Unless we have common you know practices and common uh, themes in terms of laying out the regulations, 
there will always be a, a disharmony in between uh, the military and the civil uh, factors because if the yardsticks are different, obviously then uh, different yardsticks have to be applied. So perhaps there is a, now we are at a time, uh, till about 10 odd years back it was alright. But now I think the time has come when uh, all these three agencies we need to converge, especially on the maintenance part. These are the three odd uh, thoughts or points which I thought I must share with you all. And balance if anyone has any queries or questions, even now or later, I'll be happy to take them on. Thank you very much. The uh, you know uh, proof of this whole thing is in the young students uh, who are seated here. They uh, understanding a couple of things. I think that uh, goes a lot into saying that a lot would have been learnt imbibed over the last one and a half hours. There is a lot of ground to be covered in MRO as well. Kubeir in the end he uh, observed. And uh, the way forward is that perhaps in the years to come, if we can go the way a lot of small countries have gone. China today is uh, having a $23 billion industry only in MRO activities. So we need to move ahead and uh, if we can converge both the civil and military uh, issues to an extent it is not possible fully. The small things like what uh, was brought out, certification, training, a lot of ground can be covered and uh, it is something which is doable. And the best part is today we are at a position in terms of you know the vision uh, of uh, the leadership in the country wherein people are looking at it positively and that is the best part if we uh, were to just trudge a little bit forward i think a uh, lot can be done so to that i'll uh, end this and uh, thank you very much for listening to us it's been a very wonderful afternoon where we could also uh, gather a lot of thoughts as to how people think about uh, these issues uh, today thank you very much thank you.